Good morning, everyone. It's PJ here again. Welcome to the Thursday morning devotion of Clontarf Beach Baptist Church. It's great that you can join us. I will be continuing with my Bible discovery reading through the book of John. And for today, that brings us to John chapter 4, verses 11 to 15. This will be the second installment of the story of the woman at the well. Last week, we read and talked about the first part of this narrative already. But to give us a better idea or the context of what is happening in verses 11 to 15, I will be reading from verse 4 of John chapter 4 again, which is the beginning of Jesus' encounter with this Samaritan woman. For our Bible discovery, however, so as we go and answer our usual set of questions to try and discover what God may be telling us through our passage, I will only be referring to verses 11 to 15 for our discussion. If you'd like to find out more about the previous verses, please refer to my other videos from the past weeks. They should still be available here on the Facebook page of Clontarf Beach Baptist Church. Okay, let me just read John chapter 4 from verses uh, 4 to 15, and let's see what God has in store for us today. I'll be reading from the NIV or the New International Version. And this is what it says from verse 4. Now he, so that is Jesus, now he had to go through Samaria. Uh, Jesus was traveling back to Galilee from Judea, and he had to pass through Samaria. So verse 5, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. Verse 7, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who, sit and, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now the next verses, 11 to 15, um, will be the verses that we will be focusing on for this morning. So verse 11. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Verse 13. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Verse 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. All right, so that is our passage for this morning. Let's try and discover what God may be teaching us today by again answering our usual set of Bible discovery questions. And the first question goes, what did you like most or what stood out to you the most in the passage we just read? So just simply what uh, did you like most? And for me, that would be verses 13 to 14, where Jesus said, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I like this a lot because here Jesus acknowledges the importance of material needs while also highlighting the even greater importance of things that will last forever, or things that go beyond just our physical lives. 
And Jesus isn't saying here that physical or temporary needs are supposed to be ignored completely. No, that's not what Jesus is saying. Because as we have read, Jesus did not stop the woman from drawing the water that she needed. And Jesus ev himself even asked for a drink. But uh, Jesus had a different focus. Jesus used the woman's important and uh, earthly necessity and her need to keep going back for more water to point out the fact that there is something more to life, more than just her temporary immediate needs. And I believe that also answers our usual second question uh, for Bible discovery, which asks, do you think our passage says anything about God? So do you think from what we read, does it say anything about God? And from verses 13 to 14, I believe our passage shows us that although God is definitely aware and concerned with our physical earthly needs, Jesus is still more focused on our eternal needs or our eternal well-being all the more. Because really, as Jesus had also said in Matthew 16, 26, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? So, just as the water from the well is but a temporary solution to the Samaritan woman's immediate need, so it is with most of the things in our lives today. So, important as they may be, our earthly stuff will actually have no value at all after our short physical life here on earth. And so, Jesus is offering us more than what the world can offer. Jesus is offering us good things that are good for now, but will last for eternity. And as mentioned, Jesus is more concerned about such things over just our temporary comfort. So God doesn't just give us band-aid solutions to our needs, to our struggles, and to our problems. Rather, God is giving us the eternal solution to all of those things through Jesus Christ. God wants eternal good for us. That is what he is more concerned about. Next. Let's move on to our third usual question for our Bible discovery, which goes, Do you think the passage we just read says anything about people? So does the passage say anything about us as people? And I believe our passage does so. It says something about us as people. From our passage, we can see that the Samaritan woman, like most people, even us today, most people have a very pragmatic, prideful, and short-sighted view of life. In verses 11 to 12, it, it, it reads, Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and livestock? So from verse 11, we can see the common pragmatism of people that focuses only on what is immediately needed or felt, or what seems to be practical to address immediate needs. Uh, like when people need money or material supplies, the immediate solution that most people have in mind is to work harder, you know, to earn more money, or maybe to turn to the government for help which is not bad in itself, but it's somewhat temporary. It's very pragmatic, not bad, but it's just temporary. While verse 12 shows the prideful assumption of the woman that what she knows and what she, what she does, you know, the way she does life, the way that she solves her thirst is, of course, to go to the well, which is a necessary thing to do. But she depends on that completely. Um, she depends on that because it's already been an established way to, to, you know, to quench her thirst or to meet her needs. So pragmatic, 
uh, past experience shows that it's effective and she even appeals to greater people intelligent people maybe people who are more uh, knowledgeable than her who have been successful before her but again those things are just temporary temporary solutions are those things the the way people do life today even, even in the world today is the the way that people do life really the best and permanent solution to our needs to what we need both in this life and for eternity so apparently not even through the the experience of this woman at the well jesus shows that in verse 15 she herself acknowledges that the solution that he has that that this woman has and even the solutions that we have as people are but temporary so this woman knows that she will be thirsty again and she needs to keep doing more to keep coming back in a never-ending cycle to try and keep up with her needs and wants and again isn't that true for all of our earthly needs as well be it our physical or material needs or our need to be loved or accepted or to have companionship uh, etc and all those other things yes there are some pragmatic um, ways to solve those things but those things are temporary they are temporary solutions to our needs as people but jesus is offering something eternal that once and for all satisfies all the needs of life and which goes beyond our time here on earth jesus says it will be like living water that will become in us a spring welling up to eternal life of course jesus will elaborate and talk about his solution to life more as his conversation with the woman moves on so we haven't read the whole story yet and we'll be looking at that in the weeks to come but for today we'll end here at verse 15 and i'll be leaving uh, i'll be leaving you again with my usual last question for bible discovery and this question goes if what we have just read today were true what do you think you have to do about that so if what we read were true what do you think you have to do about that or more specifically regarding our passage if it were true that god is concerned both for our earthly and eternal needs and that god has an eternal solution for all the concerns of your life through Jesus, what do you think you have to do about that? So, are you already considering Jesus' solution for all the things in your life? You know, maybe the things that uh, you're struggling with or the things that you need. So, are you still uh, trying to do things or struggling even to do things through the old pragmatic earthly way you know apart from christ and how is that working for you now i hope today's passage challenges you to think about the good things that god is offering you through jesus and how he wants you to live your life in light of eternity and not just for the here and now so god has something good in store for us both for now and for all eternity. Now, I believe this is a good thing for all of us to consider. All right, that's all that I have for today. Let me just uh, close with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this story of uh, Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well. We haven't finished the story yet. We're probably just halfway through, but thank you that um, you're already challenging us to think about how we do life and how you have given us uh, a permanent and eternal solution to all of our struggles, to all of our needs. We thank you, God, that you are showing to us that you love us and that you're truly concerned um, for our needs, not just the here and now. Of course, you do um, look out for our temporary eternal need, oh, sorry, temporary earthly needs as well. But even more so, you are more concerned 
of what is permanent, of what is eternal, of what will happen to us um, even after our life here in this world. So help us to, to trust in you, Lord Jesus, regarding um, the things that you say. Help us to trust in you regarding how we would live our lives. I know some people who may be watching, may maybe they haven't put their trust in you yet. Maybe they haven't really considered what you're offering um, for their lives yet. Again, both now for and for or for eternity. I pray that you speak to them, Lord. I pray that you stir their hearts and they may see and realize that the things of this world and how the world does things are but temporary. Some of them may be good for a time, but really it won't last. So help help them, help these people, help them realize, Lord, that they need you. That they need uh, your guidance and your leading to live your life. And even for us who already know you as our Lord and Savior, who have chosen to entrust our lives to you, we confess sometimes we forget and sometimes we think and act like the world does, focusing on the temporary rather than on the eternal and doing things the, the way the world does things. Help us to change, Lord Jesus. I know you are changing our hearts every day. Help us to change our minds as well and do things and really decide upon things according to your will. Thank you again for your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done for us. We pray all of these things in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you again for joining us. I hope you have a great day today. Bye.